Hey everybody, it's Christina from Creations with Christina and today we're going to start a series of videos on how to use your Silhouette Studio program. It's a free program that you can download from Silhouette's website. If you don't have a Silhouette but want to are thinking about getting one and want to play with it, you can go ahead and download it right from their website. Um, but it's a design program used for the Silhouette SD and the Silhouette Cameo machines. So today I thought I would show you some of um, some basic stuff, uh, and every Monday we'll have a new video on something new on the program. So today we're going to just go over some of the buttons that are over here on the left-hand side, and we're going to start with the Select tool. The Select tool is what you use to move images around and to um, uh, edit and grab stuff on, to, on your mat. There's this button right here, which is your Edit Points. I have not used it yet, but you you can actually make your um, images so you can delete areas and stuff like that. It's I won't even try to explain that one. The next one is draw a line. So we're just going to go ahead and all this is all this is is just a a feature that you can just draw a line however you want it to be. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. There's also a draw a rectangle. And if you hold down your shift key, you can actually go ahead and make. Um, your images proportionate. So, not proportionate, but keep it to scale is what I was trying to say. There's draw a rounded rectangle. So we're just going to go ahead and draw that and you'll see that this has rounded corners. We're going to select that. When you click on one of the red, the red lines to it, you can go ahead and select it. And then I just hit the delete key to take it off my screen. Then there's a draw circle option and you can make this oval circle. And again, if you use the shift key, we're gonna select the circle again, hit the shift key, it'll keep it proportionate, or keep it to scale. So I let go of the shift key before I was um, done drawing. That's why it came into an oval. But let me try that one more time. So we're gonna hold the shift key and draw our circle. And there you go. Select it. I'm just going to click on the red line and hit the delete key to get those off the screen. And then the next thing I want to show you is there's also these keys right here. Draw the polygon. And basically what you do is every time you click, you're creating your own kind of shape. So that's just, I start with a click and then click in different areas to make the line stop. And then I connected it together. So I'm going to select it and delete that one. Then there's also a dry curve shape. That's the one that looks like a number eight. I'm gonna hit select that one. And I'm gonna start by clicking. And then once you click again, you can see that you're making more curved lines. And then I'll bring it straight up here, connect it, and now that shape is what we'll cut out. The next one is the draw freehand, which pretty much works just like the rest of them. You click and then move your line and click in your other spot, and that's what draws your shape. And then there's the text box. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and select that one. And as soon as I hit that text box, you'll see on the right hand side, a text style um, window opens. So I'm just going to go ahead and click in the, my mat. I'm going to type in my name. As you can see, all the letters are really close together. And as, if you come over to the text style box, you can actually change the distance between your letters. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and select that. You can change the size of your letters um, by either dragging your box. You can drag it from the corner. You can drag it right from the bottom. You can make it taller. On the side, you can make it wider. Or you can come over here to the text style, and where it says text size, you can go ahead and change that right in there. So I selected to be 36. Let's just change this up to 72 so it's a little bit easier to see. And then if you want to change your font, say you're not happy with the font that you selected, there's a font section right over here and you can go ahead and select whatever font you want your cut to be. Select another font here. I need to go back to the old photo shoot. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I want to weld these letters together so it's one piece. So I'm going to choose my character spacing so they're very close together again. 
Now you can see here that the letters are overlapping. And then I'm going to go up in the upper right hand side there's a modify window. I'm going to go ahead and select that one. That's just a gray box with the letter M on top of it. And I'm going to hit the weld key and you can see here now all of my pieces are inter intersected. So they're all welded together. And then again I can go ahead and adjust this to be whatever size I want it to be. The other way you can do that is I'm just going to hit Command Z to get back or Control Z to get back to the way I had it before. I'm going to go back over to the text style box, which is um, up in the upper right hand corner. You'll see a letter A. I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to change my spacing again so that they're overlapping. And then I can come over to my image, right click, and hit weld. And now you can see these letters are welded together again. If you wanted to, I'm going to hit Command Z and go back to the regular style I had before. Um, once again, using the text style box, I'm going to change my spacing a little bit so that they're overlapping. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to show you something a little bit different. I'm going to make this a little bit larger just to kind of give it uh, easier to see. And I want to actually change my letters and move them into position the way I want them. I'm going to go ahead and select my image. I'm going to right click and hit on group. Now all of my letters are going to be separate. So now when I click on the letter H, I'm just highlighting the letter H. So I can actually move this and overlap these however I want them to be so I can weld it together. So I have all of my letters overlapping. I'm going to go ahead and draw a box around them and that's just using the arrow which is the select tool on the uh, upper left hand side. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a rectangle right around them so that all of my letters are selected. I'll right click and I'm going to group these back together so now it's actually one box again. When I select it again, I right click and hit weld, you'll see all my letters are now welded together. So that's just another way to do some welding if you want to change your style the way you have your letters arranged, you can go ahead and do that. Now for cutting, what you're going to do is go to File, Send to Silhouette, and you'll see a little Send to Silhouette window will pop open. You would go ahead and select your settings, and that would um, you can choose if it's a print paper, pattern paper, card stock, however you want to, whatever you plan on using and you can change your speed and how fast it's going to cut, how thick, you th the thickness of your paper, you can double cut, and you can change your blade. So for example, if I'm using um, an American Crafts card stock, which is a little bit thicker, um, I would keep my speed probably at four, three or four, thickness at 33, and change my blade dial to five. And then I would just go ahead and hit Send to Silhouette. My silhouette's not turned on right now, but then what you would do is hit Cut Page. And it would go ahead and load this into your machine and cut away, and you'd be all set. So that's our first video in our series. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'll see you next week when we do a, another little tips and tricks for the Silhouette Studio program. Thanks for watching.